Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to take a look at building uh, or utilizing this module in a digital clock project for the shop. So, ended up getting a couple of these off of eBay. You can see the price here, 371 Super, super cheap price. So, I decided to pick up a few for a project. So, they run on anywhere from, I think, 5 to 12 volts. And um, kind of an interesting little project. So, uh, one of the things we're going to do is cut this out on the laser. So uh, i tell you what, let's hop over to Inkscape and start with a design. Okay, we're in Inkscape and what I've already done is created my tabbed box. Now to create the tabbed box, I used the Laser Tools Tabbed Box Maker, which is a plugin for Inkscape. And as you can see here, I set up my general box sizes. Um, and I took most of the defaults as far as tab width went for the time being and then used my material thickness of 2.5 millimeters I used a curve of 0.2 and in general if you have a 40 watt laser uh, you're going to be about a 0.2 curve uh, and I set it for a little bit extra clearance which worked out nice because the parts came out uh, pretty tight fitting which is good so this is one of the numbers you may want to adjust um, depending upon how your part comes out and, and melting and that kind of stuff uh, space between parts is how much they're offset from each other and I simply applied this so this is the output now what I did is I've exported this as an EPS file EPS encapsulated postscript file and then I've imported the, these into uh, cut 2d okay so we've now imported the EPS into cut 2d I've set the origin at the center and this is one of the things you'll notice when I'm working uh, at the laser I've got the eight and a half by 11 sheet which is approximately the size of this um, working area with a center mark on it and I'll use the alignment laser to um, you know center it for that piece so I just simply lay that piece over the, the plexiglass or the acrylic and, and line it up now what I'm doing here what I want to show is I've got already the tool pass set for the cutting out the um, internal pieces but one of the things I want to share is this so notice the results of the tab box these are not joined so uh, the box are actually four pieces of tabs which is a little bit interesting so what I typically do is I select all four sections of one and I create a tool path for that so I'll create a tool path here so I'll select it and then um, I'll call this simply box one and then I'll let it calculate now what's going to happen is it's going to run my tool path first on this one then this one and kind of go around and, and run the multiple tool paths. Now, uh, what I want to do is take a quicker look at, uh, not really a quicker look, but maybe a more detailed look at the tool path itself. So let, 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 let's actually do another tool path uh, on this one and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. So what I've done, so I've got this selected, so I'm now going to go and I'm going to set select this for the tool path. Now, what I'm going to do is, is, you notice I have tool set up, CO2 laser. Let's look at this. So I've got this set up as just tool name CO2 laser. I'm treating it as an end mill. I'm taking the, the geometry as being 0.2 millimeters, which is, again, as I've mentioned before, about average for the curve for a CO2 laser uh, and cutting is about 2 point millimeters you'll find. Now I've set the pass depth at 0.1 millimeters. So this means at a 2.5 or obviously anything greater than a 2 millimeter uh, piece of material it's going to make three passes and then now I've got it set at my speed of uh, 0 0.5 millimeters per second and again you'll have to adjust this depending upon your own per machine and its its parameters so what I find is is I I get a good smooth cut with multiple or smooth edges I'll say with multiple passes and so this will give me three cuts now the reason I'm going with three cuts is to make sure that the part is cut out and I'm going to set it rather flat on the screen as you'll see in the time-lapse video so uh, it gives a very smooth edge uh, in, in, in quite frankly very close in it will cut in about one pass 
However, when I get out to the, the further edges out here, it will take two to three passes because of the attenuation of the beam on this, because it's roughly a 30 watt machine, really. And so, uh, again, the three passes ensures I get a complete cut. Now, what I could do is, is probably set these uh, closer in ones for reduce the depth over here because you can see my starting depth over here since there's no z-axis movement I could probably cut this down and this is something I might experiment with in the future I just kind of sank in as I was making this video that I could probably do this and save myself a little bit of production time in running it so it doesn't have to make three complete passes so anyways something to uh, kind of think about so anyways, then what I do is once this is all done, and I'm not going to do the rest because you kind of get the idea, is I'm just going to calculate the path. And then what I'm going to do is go back here, and I'm going to export the code, or show you this. And what I've done is I've, I've written a CO2 post-processor for this, which is pretty simplistic. And if you look back at my 2-watt laser diode videos, you'll see see it kind of back there uh, and I've just modified it a little bit for the CO2 and uh, basically the change I'm using M4 on uh, M5 off it was a little bit different because I was using the PWM adjustment in the prior version so anyways let's jump back to the machine and take a quick look at the time lapse of this being cut out then let's go to the bench and see what the finished product look, look, looks like Okay, welcome back. So we took a look in the computer, uh, how we set up uh, in Inkscape. We did the SVG, SVG drawing. We imported it as an EPS into Cut2D. We set it up. Uh, and you notice I, I mentioned that I centered on, I, I used the center as the origin. Now, one of the things that I did is now, because I used the paper size, 8.5 by 11, I'm going to use this template to locate this on my um, on my work material, and then what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to bring my head around, and then I'll do a quick test fire and to line my head up a little bit because uh, sometimes the laser gets a little bit off with focus so just set that, set that up all right so now I know I'm uh, dead center of my material and uh, I'm ready to go so tell you what let's uh, do a time lapse of watching this cut Okay, so here's the finished product. We've got the uh, clock put together. So we've cut out the case as you saw in the time lapse. Um, and uh, so we got the clock module installed. So it does come with a little push button hokey switch. So I replaced it with this switch. Actually, um, that's eventually going to be placed with a momentary push button. I just didn't have any, so I just used the switch to set it so you could set the time. And uh, what I did for power, I was originally going to use a 9-volt battery for power, uh, but what I decided to do is actually use one of these for power. So what happened, I had one of these and the switch went bad, <clears throat> Excuse me. so I decided to upcycle it and took it apart, and this is what happens to be inside of it. So it has four 2-volt batteries, a power regulator, obviously a plug for a charger. Here's the charger over here. And uh, so I, I said, heck, why, why don't I just use that? Um, because it runs, I think, anywhere from like 5 to 12 volts. So this outputs actually around 8 volts uh, from this. Uh, so, you know, worked perfect. And so I've got the recharger circuit back here. So when I plug this in to recharge it, it it'll run forever on, on this much power, actually. So uh, no issues there. And again, this case is all pressure fit together. There's no glue on this case at all holding it together. And, you know, I can shake it and, 
everything. So it actually held together very nice. So the settings were, were, were really nice. The finish on the edges, really nice again. You know, there were three passes, so uh, made a very smooth edge, which is nice. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I didn't like having to epoxy the back stuff here, as you can see. Um, but hey, it's okay. You don't really see the back that much. I'd like to come up with something different if I did it again. Um, however, I really couldn't think of anything. And so the, the knockout came out good. And, and again, I replaced the switch with probably a big red button or something. What I might do is also put some kind of, in the future, maybe do another one, put a button on the top or something like a, you know, self-destructor. I kind of like the looks here. I hate to say it, but it, it kind of looks, um, I don't know. Um, well, you tell me what you think it looks like in the comments with the batteries in there like that. Anyways, I thought this was a really cool build for a shop clock, and um, I'm pretty happy with it. So, if you found this build interesting, hey, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, a lot more coming. Cheers, see you in the next video. Below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.